Hello my babies, with babies, welcome to this wonderful session. Here we're talking about the natural zodiac. And this is a birth chart. Now, this is not the way most people would draw it. Normally you wouldn't see this diamond, these two diamonds here. But this is the way I draw it. And I'll explain in another session why. But right now just focus on the circle this is how a birth chart looks a western birth chart the indian vedic birth charts look differently but that's another story even they the vedic astrologers of india agree that the circular depiction is the best because it's that's how the sky is so the first sign of the zodiac is aries and therefore in the natural zodiac we will place aries in the first house and the first house in every horoscope in everyone's birth chart has the nature of Aries and Mars, meaning it is the self, it is the physical body, it is the, the actual incarnation. This is the symbol for Aries. Because it is the ram and it, it's supposed to look like a ram's head. And the horns and the symbol for Mars the ruling planet is a circle with an arrow like this and indeed the color of Mars is red now as I said this shows you the first house in your birth chart is you it is the most personal point of the zodiac more personal even than the sun sign it shows our initial steps in life how they were like our initial approach to life and it shows our personality our appearance, how our physical body looks like and acts. And if you've got good placements there, then you'll have a wonderful body. Bad placements, problematic body. It also shows the demeanor, the way you behave and the first choice you would make. In any given situation, the kind of energy you have in the first house governs your first choice. This is the house of the me first energy because this is the energy of Aries and Mars. Me first, my way, my way and no one else's and fast, fast. Now, if you've got many placements in the first house of your horoscope it means you decided to put yourself first in this lifetime if you don't have placements there it means that you decided to focus more on some other area of life other than the personal self the first house is a house of the personal self Okay, now this is in terms of the house itself, but in terms of Aries and Mars. Mars is a personal planet, is the way we act, it's action, and so is Aries. Also our muscles, 
Mars and Aries show our muscles, they govern muscles. And in terms of body areas, this is the head, it's the first sign of the zodiac. So it governs the first part of your body, which is the head and the hair. Now, sport is a very liked thing by Aries and Mars. They love movement. This energy is an energy of movement, as I said, action. It's a masculine energy. A feminine energy would lay back and be more receptive. This is a masculine energy. This is an action-oriented energy. And it is fast action. As I mentioned previously, it's all about moving things fast. On a bad side, it gives anger and violence. Remember, Mars is the god of war. And collectively, it does govern war. And also pain, both collectively and personally. It governs pain. So, a poor-placed Mars or... Any poor placed Aries planets, they will give you anger, issues, violence, tendencies, stuff like that. Those people who are very violent, very impulsive and, and violence impulses, they have this kind of energy of a, of a really bad Aries. Once again, it is the ram. Aries is the, the sign of the ram. But on a good side, it gives a fighting spirit, a warrior spirit. It gives the drive. This is another key word for this energy, drive. If you've got a powerful Mars in your zodiac or many placements in Aries, you have the drive to push through. You have the drive to move things forward. You have the drive to, as I said, move things forward whenever there is something going on or something not going on. You're able to take that action. You're, you, you desire to take that action. Not only you desire, but you do take that action. Required to move things forward and you like movement. Also, Aries and Mars represent a very sexual energy, is one of the sexual energies of the Zodiac. You will see there are more sexual energies of the Zodiac in the Zodiac. Now, Mars and Aries represent the animalistic type of sexuality, the very body-like type of sexuality, fast, and just sex as in physical sex you will see other signs will show sexuality more in terms of sensual sexuality. Others will show sexuality more in terms of spiritual sexuality, emotional connection associated with sex, not just, you know, sex as in two bodies copulating. Um, but Mars and Aries energy is about that. It's about the, the animalistic type of sex. It's not necessarily something bad. It, it all depends on how it is placed, on how that manifests. It's also a very dominant energy, masculine energy. As I said, action and movement. Also, it's about courage and encouraging others as well. And I did mention that Aries likes things fast. Therefore, Aries Mars energy will give impatience. When an Aries Mars person wants something, they want it now. They wanted like, end this now. 
They don't want to wait for things at all. This is this would be it with Mars and Aries and the first house. Now, the next house and sign and planet of the zodiac. Second house and the sign is Taurus. This head this is supposed to be a head here and these are the horns of the bull, because Taurus means bull in Latin. And the planet is Venus. With Venus here, you may guess that it is a more, first of all, feminine energy and a more easy energy. It's not as dynamic as Mars, Aries energy not as action oriented but it's a feminine energy of preserving things of nurturing things and think of it it's this is the first energy of the zodiac as i said it gives you the incarnation it gives you the physical body the first steps in life the first things first the me first the I want things my way and only my way. The me, 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 me. <laughs> now, Taurus is a next level. Is no longer the physical body is what you put into the physical body. Therefore, food. And material resources. And these material resources include money, positions, any kind of positions, wealth, also it's a very sensual energy, it's another sexual energy of the zodiac, but this is the sensual sexuality, Venus as per Taurus, and I say Venus as per Taurus because Venus also rules another sign, you will see. Venus as per Taurus is about the senses, the physical senses. We have had the physical body here, and now it is the, the extension of that, the physical senses. That's why Taurus loves everything that is good in life. Good food, good drinks, good possessions, good objects. And they love to feel, physically feel stuff. For example, you may think of bed sheets. Taurus will choose bed sheets that will be very soft to the touch and very comfortable like their surroundings must be very comfortable they care a lot about their f financial stability their material stability not just financial but they are very related they care a lot about the material stability they have. And this is the thing. It is the house, the sign, the planet of personal resources and the ability to manage them. As I said, it also governs food. Well, food is a personal resource. It governs agriculture. Venus and Taurus, agriculture and the results of it, plants, trees, flowers, everything that is extracted from the earth. Also, what this house, the sign and this planet will give and show is one's own value system. What 
they consider as valuable. For some, it may be strictly money. For others, it may be ideas or... Uh, it depends. You will see all the other energies of the zodiac and combine it. You you can see how many combinations there there can be. For some, it may be the property, the family, the career, the spiritual ascension. It it just depends. But Taurus will give you the value system. Taurus and Venus as per Taurus. And the self-worth. How able is one to feel worthy? Now, things that Venus is one of the benefics of the Zodiac. There are two benefics. One being Jupiter and the other is Venus. Venus is the lesser benefic because Jupiter gives greater blessings. But nonetheless, Venus is a benefic. And wherever she is in your birth chart, that's an area of your life where you have a lot of beauty, a lot of blessings and wealth, and where you place your value system, as I said. So... To summarize it, we have pleasure. Yes, it is a sign of pleasure. They love to enjoy. But in terms of senses, physical senses, physically enjoy stuff. So pleasure as of the senses. And therefore the physical senses, money, positions, the value system. One's ability and method of managing their own resources. Taurus is a very methodical sign. Food and what goes into the body. Material resources. Physical nourishment. It's a very nourishing energy. Taurus loves to preserve. As I said, methodical approach. Agriculture, flowers, trees, plants, nature and its resources. Material stability. Now, in terms of the body part associated with Taurus, it's the, most people would say the neck, but it's not only the neck, because it's, Taurus rules the senses. So it's the mouth, the nose, the ears, the sen the organs of senses that one has and the neck and therefore Taurus also rules music Venus rules art and you will see combined with the other sign she rules it gives you arts, generally. But here with Taurus, just with Taurus, it's more musical arts. Okay. This is... This is it for Taurus, Venus as per Taurus, and the second house. Now, the next sign is Gemini. So we have the, the third house. We have Gemini. And the planet of Gemini is Mercury. These are the symbols for them. Now, don't get fooled. I drew the symbol for Mercury a little bit bigger. But that's because I myself am a Gemini. So... <laughs> Is the smallest planet, actually, and the fastest. And this will make a lot of sense once you understand this, this energy. It's the energy of communication, the conscious mind, language. 
languages, a lot of Gemini placements, or not necessarily a lot, fewer but good Gemini placements, will give you the ability to learn a lot of languages and to like that. It's the energy of thoughts, ideas, learning, and especially learning new things. It is the house of skills. And novelty, what, whatever is new, it's, it's an energy which gets bored a lot. A very, very lot. And very, very fast. Gemini energy needs diversity and needs... A lot of things. Uh, Gemini energy cannot keep one line only. It's the energy of 10,000 open tabs at the same time. And I mean it at the same time. It's <laughs> in, in terms of house... This is the house of siblings. So your first brother or sister will show up here in this house. Your second brother or sister will show up not in this house because it goes in twos. So it will show up in this house. Your third brother or sister will show up here and fourth brother or sister will show up here and so on their energy and uh, the kind of relationship you have with them it's not necessary to have siblings if you have placements here now another thing that this energy involves is spontaneity. Gemini people, very spontaneous, very spontaneous, and we don't like planning at all. It's, uh, it's something that bores us. <laughs> it's also an energy of immaturity. If not understood correctly, if not having other placements in your horoscope which will give you maturity, it's an energy of immaturity. And think of it, it's only the third house sign planet of the zodiac. It, it's logical for it to, to be, to still be immature. But because of this, immaturity in young people, generally. So because of this, if you have any kind of connection between your ascendant, which will show in the first house, or your first house to be in Gemini, or Mercury in the first house, or an aspect a harmonious flow of energy between a Gemini placement, placement or a Mercury placement and or Mercury placement and the first house. This will give you a young appearance no matter what. So it's, it's good. <laughs> It's also an energy of extremes, of polar opposites. It's Gemini, the twins. This is what Gemini means, the twins. And this sign is perceived as the twins in the West. But in the East and in the Indian Vedic astrology, it is called the couple. And... Both, from my perspective, both of them are correct. Now, the couple archetype 
of this energy will show you the fact that this is an energy of extremes. The couple is masculine and feminine. And thing is with Gemini, we are both extremes at the same time. I know for many other people this may not make sense, but this is how it is. <laughs> extremes, no in-between, we love short trips, it's spontaneous short trips, people with a lot of Gemini placements, you'll see them traveling a lot, but not in a long distance type of trips, unless they have other placements which will give you that energy but if it's only this they'll travel a lot but they won't like to stay there for long it's it's spontaneous it's not planned but it also not it's also not long lasting but they'll have another one very soon afterwards <laughs> it's whew. so to resume, communication, very important. This is very important. And in terms of house, this house is the house of the conscious mind. You will see following energies of the zodiac will give you the subconscious mind. This is the conscious mind. Thoughts, ideas, languages, as I said, speaking words linguists for example and people who study languages they have a lot of gemini placements it's the energy of learning and loving to learn wanting to learn new stuff all the time it's if you ask a gemini about this they'll say this is what they live for to learn new stuff always New things, as I said, the conscious mind, skills. In terms of body parts, this is the area of the hands. The lower part of the neck, starting with that, the shoulders and the hands. And... Uh, it makes sense what what do you use to perform any kind of skill you have your hands okay i said i kind of said it all communication languages conscious mind thoughts ideas skills learning new things getting bored very easily very fast therefore need of, need of diversity novelty House of siblings, the energy of small or short spontaneous trips, therefore spontaneity. As I said, Mercury is the fastest moving planet. Extremes, polar opposites, and possibly immaturity is not a must. It's possibly immaturity and young people. Now, some who don't understand this energy very well and they manifested on a bad polarity, this will involve gossip. But not all Geminis are like that. Okay. Now, the, f the fourth house and the fourth sign and planet of the zodiac fourth house this is the house of the crab cancel and the moon this is the mother the mother energy and the mother figure the moon 
where you have your moon in your horoscope, that's that shows how your mother was like. It shows your relationship with your mother. And generally, your moon represents your mother on one side. On another side, it represents your childhood. And on another side, it represents your emotions. This house and the sign and planet give the energy of family and it shows the home base, the place one calls home and the security find, found there. So it's the feeling, both the feeling of home and family and the space in itself, the space called home. So this is the house of the house. The zodiac house of the physical house. The place we feel home. And it shows our property. What we own in terms of property. It shows our stability, our security, our safety, whatever word you want to use for this. But... If Taurus is the material stability, security, safety, the crab energy is the emotional security, which derives from having a space for our own self and our family, of course. This house shows one's own life foundation. Why so? Because the mother is the one who teaches you how to feel. The, the person from whom you learn how to treat your emotions as a child. And this is what a mother does... Well, a mother does a lot of things. But one of these things is to set one's emotional foundation of life. It's a very important house. All of them are. This energy is also the moon and the crab. A very psychic, intuitive, receptive, feminine energy. As I said, it shows our emotion, emotions, our emotional world. Okay. Now, the next sign and house. Fifth house is the house. Of the sun. And Leo. Now, who is the sun? The sun is the giver of life, the source of life. And so it is here. This is the house of children, the house of fun. How you have fun. The house of hobbies. Of passions. Of games. Of play. Of art. And creativity. It gives joy for life. Enjoying life and having fun. If you have a good placed sun... In your zodiac, you love to live. You love to have fun. In terms of... Oh, I forgot to mention for the crab and the moon. Body parts, body area, the chest. And for women, boobs as well. It makes sense. Again, remember the mother archetype. 
Now, Leo governs the heart and the circulatory system. Most astrologers don't say this, but it also governs the stomach. And this you properly understand once you remember that at the stomach level, there is the solar plexus chakra. So, to resume, source of life, joy for life, enjoying to live, to have fun, hobbies, passions. Again, any way you have fun is shown in this house and where Leo is, what Leo placements you have, and your son, where your son is. Games, play, children, arts and creativity. It is also the house of speculation. The house and the sun and Leo may give you an interest in speculation. Whether that speculation be on the highest manifestation, foresight, prophecy. Remember Apollo, the god Apollo. He was the god of oracles. He could tell the future. This is the highest manifestation. Now, other manifestations of this speculation? Gambling. Gambling, casino, casinos, stuff like that. <laughs> So, to give you examples of how things may go in birth charts, let's say you have Mercury in the fifth house. We love to talk, to learn new things and skills, to go on short trips, to write, to talk with our children, because remember Mercury in the fifth house children to talk with our children and also our children love to talk a lot let's say we have the moon in the fifth house we love our family we love to have fun with our family our home space is fun for us we love to decorate our home space playing with our family and nurturing them Venus in the fifth house, we enjoy our positions and looks a lot. We are passionate about our money and our food. Our value system is our hobby. We enjoy putting our value system in the spotlight because Leo is the energy of being in the spotlight, is the energy of the celebrity, of all eyes on me. What else? With Venus in the fifth house, love flirting, being in a relationship, passionate about a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I, I will give you further examples, but let's just go on with the natural zodiac. Oh. I forgot to mention that Leo fifth house energy also likes sports, but not in the way Aries does. Aries likes sport just for sport, for physical movement. Leo likes it because of the competition. Leo likes competition because they like to be, to, you know, to be the star. Of that competition. Now, another example. Think you have Mars in your fifth house, or Aries in your fifth house. Remember what I said about Aries and Mars being the animalistic sexuality? Well, guess what's fun for you with this kind of placement here? <laughs> nice. Next, 
we have the sixth house and Virgo, the maiden, and Mercury. This is work and service. It's not work in terms of career. Work in terms of work for itself, for what you give by working, what you, how you serve society. The thing is that for, even for people who don't consciously know about this, who have strong Virgo placements and they begin to be workaholic, this is the energy of paying your karma from past lives through work and service you give back to others to society through your work and this is a way of life making certain people with strong Virgo placements like this energy of work so much because they have karma to pay or to accumulate it depends but it's mostly pay, I think. Probably. <laughs> now, Virgo energy loves to know they are needed. And that their work has an impact in society. That their work counts for something. Want to insult a Virgo? Tell them that their work values nothing. Tell them that they are incapable of working, of doing things right. Oh. Virgo energy is an energy of perfectionism. It's a very calculated energy. A lot of, a lot of thinking. Again, it's another Mercury sign. A lot of thinking, but not in the Gemini style anymore. A lot of thinking in a more calculated planning type of thinking as i said it's about delivering a service to the people around them and they are very detail oriented someone with strong virgo placements oh they'll be able to notice details that no one else will and imagine how self-critical they are it's a very critical energy it, it, it involves criticism. Now, criticism can be something good. It depends on how, what you make of it. How you deliver that criticism, whether it be to yourself or to others. As I said, it is perfectionism. It is also the energy of health, one's own health. Virgo loves to be ordered, organized. They love planning, putting things in categories. Oh, they, they, they don't like mess. Everything has to be in its place. There's a space for anything, a place for anything, for everything. And they will take the time to, uh, to arrange, to organize everything. It's a very self-conscious energy as well. They are, they are very critical, as I said. Now, the downfall of this makes for a lot of worries and caring about what others think. Very bad. It's also the energy of numbers and mathematics. The logical mind... In, Remember, with Gemini, I said the conscious mind. With Virgo, is the logical mind in terms of organizing, analyzing, putting things in categories. And just like any other energy, it has of various manifestations for good or for 
I don't want to say it. <laughs> but treated right, again, it's a good energy. All energies are good once understood and integrated, properly integrated. Here we come to the, the other sign of Venus, Libra. And Venus. Now, there's a reason why I chose pink for this. This is the energy of relationships. And this house will show you your partner, your marriage. As I said, it's the energy of relationships of marriage and legal union. Also, there is something I forgot with the Sun and Leo here. This is also the house of romant, the house and the energy, Leo, of romanticism and romantic affairs. But Libra and Venus as per Libra is the energy of relationships. It's, it's something serious. We're in a relationship, we're together, we're equals. The translation here is the balance, the scales of balance. This is the archetype of the sign. And a Libra energy is all about equality. The one-on-one -on -one communication. It also involves communication, but different than Gemini. is the one-on-one -on -one communication. Is the relationship type of communication, partnership. It also involves business partnership. But remember, any kind of partnership, any kind of relationship that Libra brings is a one-on-one. -on -one. This energy is also the energy of justice, of fairness, equality. Balance and symmetry. It also involves a lot of gentleness and grace. You'll see this in, in people with either Libra rising or a lot of Libra placements. They are very gracious. They're very gentle and very gracious. They love beauty and aesthetics. Remember, I said that Venus governs art. Here we add music. Now here, it's visual arts. Therefore, people with Libra placements and with a very well-positioned Venus in their zodiac will love to dress well, to look well, Don't confuse stuff. You'll see that Leo and Libra have similar energies. I, I already mentioned the type of similarity between the romantic affairs here with Leo and marriage partnership here with Libra. Leo also loves to express themselves by their physical looks. But this is the thing, Leo loves to express themselves through their physical looks. People with lots of Leo placements, they may love a lot of makeup. They may love a fashion a lot. Now, Libra will love to dress well, but not in the Leo vibe of expressing oneself through style, one's own style. Libra will love to dress themselves well because they care about looks. 
They care about aesthetics a lot. Libra is the most visual energy of the zodiac. People with poor Libra placements, they will not mind surroundings which are not aesthetically pleasing. But Libras will. For us, I am a Libra rising. <laughs> and for us, things to look well around us, oh, it's a must. And also, I tell you that someone with Libra energy, with strong Libra energy, we don't like partners who don't look well. That's it. <laughs> and remember, Venus is the goddess of beauty. So, Venus will give you beauty. People with Libra energies in association with their first house and ascendant, they will look very well, very gracious. Another, oh, I said visual arts, beauty for the eyes, especially, this is very important for Libra, beauty for the eyes. It's a must. Diplomacy and tact. I said it's communication, Libra is, is communication very diplomatic communication. Libra rules diplomacy as, as you see diplomacy happening in the world, but it also rules diplomacy at the personal level. The way one expresses themselves, Libras will express themselves very graciously. They will have a very gracious way of expressing themselves with words. And they will be able to use a lot of subtlety in, in their language when needed. And it's not just when needed. It, it's just a Libra's nature to use subtlety. It's not like the Aries energy of do that, of being very assertive. It's the, the opposite. And starting with Libra, we get the opposites. The extremes. Aries and Libra are on an axis. This is the first sign. This is the seventh sign. There are 12 signs of the zodiac and therefore six pairs of signs. And each pair will display polar opposites. Remember, Gemini loves that. <laughs> Coming back to Libra, as I said, graceful and tactful communication and language. Libra people don't like vulgar language. Unless there are some other placements in one's zodiac which will give a preference for vulgar language people with libra placements will not like that libra energy will give you will make you possibly shy again it's not a must but it, it is the energy of being a little shy <laughs> Again, depends on whatever other placements you have in your zodiac. And most importantly, it's the energy of caring about the other person, genuinely caring about the other person. Thing is that all other zodiac signs think in terms of I. I am, I have, I think, I love, I, I feel. Uh, 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 I, Sun and Leo is all about me, is the ego. <laughs> I, 
I work, I provide. Well, provide is more like for Taurus, provide for for the family. Taurus also likes family. But Libra thinks in terms of we. We are. If Aries is I am, Libra is we are together. <laughs> it's beautiful. And it's strong Libra placements will also give you a sense of, as I said, justice and virtue. Is the most social sign, not sociable, the most talkative sign is Gemini. But Libra is the most respectful sign. And decency, Libra cares for decency a lot. Nice. <laughs> now the next sign, the next house of the zodiac. Oh, another thing of this house is the house of open enemies as well. <laughs> Interesting how, how these things go, right? Now the next sign is Scorpio and the planet. Is Pluto. This is the most intense energy of the zodiac. This is the symbol Scorpio and Pluto. As I said, it is the most intense energy of the zodiac. Emotionally intense, mentally intense, anything, everything intense. It is the power the the house the sign the, the planet of power and control on the lower polarity scorpio people and strong pluto placements or eighth house placements will make people want to be in control because that's how they think they have power they view it externally. But it is also the energy of letting go of control. It is the energy of liberation through transformation. It is the energy of death. It is liberation by letting go. Now, this death may happen. It, it may show you actual deaths. But it also shows you any kind of transformation, any kind of purging you do in this lifetime. Whatever is in this eighth house, that's what you decided to transform in this lifetime. To so radically, drastically change entirely. Whatever Scorpio and Pluto touch, that will be transformed entirely. And I emphasize entirely. It is the sign, the energy of all or nothing. So let's say you have the moon here. Your family life will be changed entirely. Or let's say you have Scorpio in the fourth house. Again, your family life will be transformed entirely, radically. And the way this transformation happens is through crisis. This transformation will occur with traumatic events. Events that will shock you. Events that will test your emotional stability. Remember, we have gotten to axis at this point. So we had the Aries Libra axis. This is Taurus Scorpio axis. Taurus, material stability. Scorpio, emotional stability. 
you have crisis a lot. The test here and the lesson is to place yourself in emotional stability no matter the circumstances around you. But Scorpio energy will give you a lot of crisis and it's okay to cry and you'll see Scorpio people crying a lot. <laughs> Whether you see them or not, know that they are. <laughs> so as I said, it's the energy of power and control and letting go of the false need of control. I, I tell you once again, I, I repeat this how many times I, I have the, the occasion. Power is personal. It's not about others. It's not about having power over others. Power is entirely personal. And it's not about having power over your own self as in controlling yourself. Power is not control. Power is just power. That's it. The real power, the most powerful power <laughs> is to be. I am. I am power. This energy is also an energy of secrets and mysteries. Scorpio, Pluto, 8th house will give you an interest for hidden things, for secrets, for mysteries. And if you, let's say, have Scorpio in the first house, you will look very mysterious. You will give the vibe of a very mysterious person. <sighs> Let's say you have Scorpio in the seventh house. You will attract a lot of mysterious people. It is also the energy of, brace yourselves, dissection and detective work. As I said, it is the energy of secrets and being interested in secrets, finding them out. So detective work. You guessed it, detectives have Scorpio placements, powerful Scorpio placements. It is also the energy of dissection, as I said. Why? Because when you dissect, you look at the insides, you look at what is not seen. You look at what is hidden, what is a secret, basically. Now, this dissection can be literally dissection of bodies. So yes, people working in this area of work will have, again, strong Scorpio placements. Or more metaphorical type of dissection. And this will get into the psychological area. But we'll get there. It's also the house of pregnancy. Why? It involves pain as well. And I said about dissection, mental dissection is psychology and psychoanalysis. Pluto, Scorpio, 8th house, psychology, is the energy of psychology will give you interest for psychology and psychoanalysis will make you able to an analyze your psyche very well. Will make you able to analyze your psyche to, to the most hidden parts of it. Which is very good. It's a very good thing. It is also the energy of the of the energy body. 
as you know, we have a physical body, which shows up in the first house of the chart. And we also have an energy body. And this energy body is represented in the eighth house of the zodiac, in Scorpio as a sign and in Pluto as a planet. Therefore, chakras, light body, auras, unseen entities like with the physical eyes and stuff like that, but mostly the energy body. This is the Kundalini is also ruled by Scorpio, Pluto, 8th house. Occult knowledge as well. It's a very spiritual energy. So you'll be interested in occult knowledge and the dark side of life. Quite literally, it may be darkness, or maybe, and or, metaphorically, it may be just the dark side of life, with you know corrupt politicians, the dark elites which control humanity, pedophiles in politics, and so on. I said previously, it is the energy of crisis and emotional security or stability, whatever word you may use here. It will give you an interest for chakras, tarot, magic, cartomancy, divination, runes, astrology, sacred practices, crystals, saging, etc. I talked about the dark side of things. This energy will give you pain, will give you trauma, will give you abuse. Scorpio, Pluto, it involves the energy of abuse, of trauma. It may bring to you predators, evildoers, dark forces, even devils. Is the energy of corruption? Is the energy of rot? Anything rotting? Death, after all. And the transformation that occurs with death. So it's, it's either for the good or for the bad. It may manifest as either actual rotting stuff or metaphoric writing stuff. Bacteria, fungi, decay, and anything that is being decomposed. Destruction, generally. That's why it rules the dark cabal, the dark forces, stuff like that. It also involves energy work. Now, on another note, coming back to access, we said that Taurus is one's own money. Scorpio and the 8th house represent other people's money, whether it be your partner's money, your family's money, and resources, money and resources. And it also shows the way we receive from other people in our life. Examples of other people's resources, maybe inheritance or just gifts, anything that you receive as resources. And therefore, as I said, it shows your ability to receive from others. Coming back to magic, this energy involves both 
dark and white magic and magicians. Now, we know it as Scorpio, but there is also another archetype for this energy, which is the dove. What do you think of when you think of the dove? Purity, spirituality, the Holy Spirit, right? So, it's an interesting combo of two archetypes, one being Scorpio and the poison of Scorpio, which brings death and also transformation with it and some kind of resurrection that transforms into the dove. So I do advise you to talk about this with friends of yours who may be Scorpios or have Scorpio placements. Maybe by this they will understand how to use this energy. Okay, now we're getting into probably my favorite house, <laughs> the ninth house. This is the house of Sagittarius. And as a planet, we've got the greater benefic, Jupiter. This is the sign for Sagittarius, and this is the symbol for Jupiter. What is this energy? This is the free spirit of the zodiac. Free spirit. Also very impulsive. <laughs> you will see they, they may be very impulsive. This is the energy of expansion. Expansion on all areas, just expansion, evolution, everything we expand, we go further, we go further, up and up, look at the sign again, look at the symbol, we go up and up and up and up and we expand, we go better and better and better, we evolve, we continue to excel. It's the energy of blessings, a lot of blessings, again Jupiter is the greater benefic, Wherever there is Jupiter in your chart, you have a lot of good luck there. It is the energy of good luck, good fortune, the energy of abundance, a lot of abundance. It's also the energy of the higher mind. Coming back to access, Gemini is the lower mind, the more... I, I said it, it involves some kind of immaturity. It is the conscious mind, but not fully evolved to the extent that Sagittarius brings, that Jupiter brings. This is the higher mind. The mind of philosophy, of faith, of spirituality and beliefs one's own belief system. It is the mind which sees the bigger picture. And this is, I value this a lot. The bigger picture. I, I have Venus in the ninth house. So you see, my value system is here. <laughs> One's own belief system, one's own belief system, teaching. Jupiter is the archetype of the teacher, of the guru. It will give you spiritual guidance. It is the energy of education and higher learning. It is also the energy of long travel. Remember, this is the energy of short, spontaneous travel. Here, we have long travel, long distance as well. It's 
an energy which likes distant cultures, loves to travel to those places to explore. It's the, as, as I said, a very expansive energy and the energy of the explorer. So there's a love for distant cultures and places. It's the energy of the humanitarian as well. It's all, it also gives love for high places, both actual high places and metaphorically high places. It is also the energy of justice and law. Similar to Libra, these two will govern the justice system. Now, in a female's horoscope, Jupiter represents her husband. As much as in a male's horoscope, Venus will represent his wife. Sometimes, Jupiter may represent the father figure, both for males and females, but it is not a must. Another thing involved with this energy is pilgrims and pilgrimages. This is long travel combined with spirituality. So... Sagittarius will bring journeys, not, not as much as spontaneous travel as Gemini, but journeys, literally journeys, something that is, is of a more long term and it will bring you more experiences and something to learn from them as well. And further on to teach. I would stay on this energy. I, I would never leave this energy. It's, it's, it, it's just perfect. <laughs> so to resume. Free spirit, impulsive, expansion, explorer, blessings, good luck, abundance. The higher mind. Seeing the bigger picture. Faith, philosophy, spirituality, beliefs, one's belief system, teaching, guidance, guru, the guru archetype, education and the higher learning, long travel, distant cultures and places, humanitarian, high places, justice and law, pilgrims and pilgrimages, and as I said, for a female, the husband. <laughs> okay. Now we're getting to the tenth house of the zodiac. This is Capricorn and Saturn. This is a heavy energy. Those are the symbols. This house represents the father. This is the mother and this is the father. Again, access. So it is the archetype of the father, the out front parent, the parent who teaches you how to deal with the world and people, with society, how to interact with them. Capricorn, Saturn and the 10th house represent the energy of career and business. This is the energy of work, just work. Now, this is the energy of work as in career, advancing in career. 
It is about social stat- status. Capricorns will care a lot for their social status. And it's an energy of authority. Saturn and Capricorn and the 10th house will show authority figures and your relationship to authority. Now, Saturn is a very restrictive energy. It brings restrictions, limitations, responsibilities. Remember I said about Gemini is the energy of immaturity. Well, Saturn is the energy of maturity. Saturn in Capricorn. And of old age. Gemini is young age, young people. Capricorn is old people, old age. And when we're talking about places, places where there are ruins from ancient times, those are Capricorn ruled. It, it is also the energy of obstacles and hardship, delays, delayed gratification. It involves work. It involves setting of priorities and planning. It will show government and governments and the state apparatus, social rules, tradition. People with strong Capricorn placements, they may like to preserve tradition and to follow the social rules that are traditional. As I said, it gives old age and longevity. Saturn and Capricorn give longevity. Also persistence and endurance. This is the whole test and lesson of Capricorn and Saturn. It will give you obstacles. It will give you hardship. It will give you delays, restrictions, limitations, delayed gratification. This in order to test your persistence and your endurance. I know it's fucked up. (laughs) Also, it shows social institutions and hierarchy. Capricorn and Saturn are the energy of hierarchy. As I said, social status and advancing on the social scale. On this, it will give you pyramidal structures with few people at the top who are the authority figures controlling and giving the norms, the rules for the people at the bottom of the pyramid. Ugly, <laughs> ugly stuff. It's a sober energy, a very serious energy. For example, if you have Capricorn or Saturn in the fifth house, you have fun by being serious. (laughs) It's also a very distant energy. If here we have the mother, the nurturer, the, the energy which nourishes you. This is a distant energy. It's a, a secluded energy. And not secluded. Secluded is more for Pisces. This is distant energy. Like uh, a Capricorn will be there in the room with you. But you will not feel them emotionally there. Somehow... It's good for business environments. Like somehow such an attitude may be okay, but things that some Capricorns don't get out of this. 
As I said, it's authoritative, strict, and rigid energy. Anything that is stiff, it's Saturn, Capricorn. But it also gives maturity, as I said. Is the most resistant to change. Wherever you have Saturn and or Capricorn in your zodiac. That's the area, area of your life which will get better with age. And it will also be resistant to change. Very. Unless you have other placements there to counteract that. It's the densest energy of the zodiac. That's why I said it's, it's a heavy energy. It's the heaviest energy. It also gives long-lasting. Anything that is long-lasting is Capricorn energy, Saturn energy. Exactly because of this resistance to change. It's also an energy which is interested in legacy, in what you leave behind. It's old-fashioned, as I said. I already mentioned it. It's about ruins, ancient things, stuff, and antiquity. It's also about respect. They care about respect. It's a very grounded energy. As I said, it, it involves norms and regulations. Discipline. This is something that Capricorn and Saturn care a lot about. It is discipline. All those restrictions, limitations, hardship that I mentioned that this energy will give you. The purpose of that, other than endurance and persistence, will be discipline. To discipline you. I don't like it either. <laughs> It gives rules and norms. It also gives the ruling class. Again, remember about the pyramidal structure of society. It gives social classes. So society ruled by Capricorn and Saturn will have social classes. It gives systems. And especially pyramidal systems. It's also an energy which cares about money, but not in the way Taurus cares about money. Capricorn, Saturn energy cares about money in terms of investing them in order for it to further generate other resources. But it's... Um, uh, more like the energy of the manager here. And Saturn... Capricorn will give you a cold and realistic view of life and approach to it. Okay. <laughs> this is 10th house, Capricorn, Saturn. Now. 11th house. Eleventh house energy is the energy of Aquarius. And the planet here is Uranus. This is a very beautiful energy. I love it. It's about astrology, <laughs> nice, science, innovation, progress, rebellion, revolution, sudden change, shock, truth is the energy of being different, 
of being a dissident. It's also fun, an energy which loves fun and having fun, crazy kind of fun. If you look at it, this is the axis of fun. <laughs> this is also the house of hopes and wishes and the windfalls of your career, of your persistence here. Now, it's different than the Capricorn energy because it's the energy of friends and groups, groups of equal people. Aquarius and Uranus don't like pyramidal structures. They don't like hierarchies. They don't like this thing of social status. What the fuck is that? We're all equal. Doesn't matter. We're all equal. It's like the, the cells in a tissue, they're all equal. And it's the energy of friends, groups, as I said, communities of like-minded people. This is very important, like-minded people. Also networking. And everyone is equal. Therefore, Aquarius will have will apply a, an equal treatment to everyone, regardless of... Leo will have a very preferential treatment. If they like you, they like you. If they don't, uh, you'll see it in the way they act, in the way they treat you. Aquarius, though, will treat everyone equally. So it's a very objective energy, also very distant energy in a different way than Capricorn, but also distant. It's, it's still a distant energy. Again, it's, um, it's very scientific, very mind-oriented, very reason-oriented. And it's able to take a step back and analyze logically stuff like that. So, as I said, it's rational and scientific. It's all about new, things which are new and invention. Now, Uranus is, is called the higher octave of Mercury, and for good reason. Mercury and Gemini care about new things as well, but not in the way Uranus does and Aquarius. This is the energy of the genius, of the inventor, the energy of invention and innovation, progress. It's also a humanitarian energy and, as I said, windfalls. Whew. So, to resume it, Astrology, science, innovation, progress, rebellion, revolution, sudden change, shock. Oh, by the way, whenever you have a, an Uranus transit in your horoscope, be prepared for a change that comes fast. You feel it, it's a shock, but it changes a lot. And it's fun as well. <laughs> it's not like the Scorpio kind of change okay it's a very explosive energy both Scorpio and Aquarius are very explosive energies truth is the energy of truth authenticity being yourself this is the energy of being authentic and different being different than the rest being the dissident. If you have Aquarius in the fifth house, let's say, the way you express yourself will be very different. Your fashion, taste and look and style will be <laughs> the rebellious type. Okay. So as I said, shock, truth, being different fun, having fun, 
crazy fun. Hopes and wishes, windfalls, friends, groups, communities of like-minded people, networking, everyone equal, equal treatment, objectivity, distant, able to take a step back to analyze, rational and scientific, new, things which are new, things which come from invention. And it's a humanitarian energy. Good. Now, the last energy of the zodiac is uh, Pisces. It's a very sensitive energy. This is the symbol for Pisces. And the planet is Neptune. Okay, so the energies involved with this house, sign, and planet are sleep and dreams, rest as well, visions, self-sacrifice. Uh, this is one of the bad manifestations of this energy. It also gives unconditional love. Venus will give love as in the more earth, earthly type of love, the love between people. This is the divine love, unconditional love for everyone, God's love. It also rules Christianity, but the good Christianity, you know, not, not the corrupted one. The, the one, the Christianity at its origin. It involves communication with the other side, the spirit world, the beyond the veil. And therefore, it is the archetype of the mystic in the zodiac. It shows and gives and likes altered states of consciousness. Whether those altered states of consciousness come by alcohol or drugs or meditation. So it's everyone's choice what kind of altered state of consciousness they prefer. As I said, it, it involves meditation, spirituality, imagination, going away, going away from this world dreaming of otherworldly realms and getting in contact with them. It's a dissolving energy. It has no boundaries. It's the ocean. Pisces mean the fish. Oh, I forgot to tell you for different signs. So this is obviously a scorpion. Sagittarius, the archer. Capricorn is uh, the sea goat. Aquarius is the water bearer or the one who pours water. And Pisces is the fish. So it's connected to the ocean. It's a very sensitive energy, very sensitive. It's like an energy sponge. It governs the subconscious mind and anything that goes on behind the scenes. Things which are not seen, things which are hidden, secrets as well. But it's different from the Scorpio type of secrets because Scorpio will, will care to, to find out the secrets, to look for them, to... Scorpio is secretive too, but they will want to know the secrets, to know what's hidden from them. Now with Pisces energy, they don't really know what's hidden from them. This is one of the low manifestations. It's an energy of isolation. Secluded energy, as I said. It's a dreamy personality. Pisces gives a dreamy personality. 
It's also the house of hidden enemies. Remember, the seventh house is the open enemies. And some say it's the seventh. Some say it's the sixth house. That of open enemies. In any case, the twelfth house is the house of hidden enemies. Again, that which you don't see. It's also the energy of memory and forgetting or forgetfulness. Pisces, Neptune, give a taste for divine art and music. Spiritual art, spiritual music are given by Pisces and Neptune. Very beautiful. And divine inspiration as well like with with this energy this is a very creative energy as well but it just it comes through from the other side it's it's like you aren't even there it's like you start painting and then in 16 seconds you've painted a, a whole chapel stuff like that not 16 seconds, but it, it might have felt like 16 seconds for you. It's an otherworldly creativity. A creativity that comes through, through you. So it's the energy of channelers, clairvoyance, and... All the clairs, if you know, if you don't know, there are many types of clairs, clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairaudience, clairsentience, is the energy of mediums, of energy readers, of psychics, monks, yogis, and retreated people. It's a very little physical energy. It's more spiritual, more non-physical. And when associated with energies which are about the physical realm, it gives a low feeling, a, a feeling, feeling low, feeling as you need rest. At the same time, it's the energy of healing and healers. Doctors are governed by this energy. Also, temples and churches, holy places, holy sites. Now, it also governs illusion and lies. Therefore, movies, the movie industry is governed by Pisces and Neptune. It's also confusion being or feeling lost is the energy of mistakes as i said alcohol and drugs at the same time it's disillusionment disappointment with what you thought was real in the first place or what what let's say with movies for example once you learn the truth behind movies, you, you get some severe disillusionment and disappointment. And this whole disillusionment and disappointment will have the purpose of renouncing the material world. Making you renounce the material world so that you commune with God is the last sign of the zodiac, is the energy that crosses to the other side. I, oh, sorry. I always say that, you know, it's the sign represented by two fish, and I always say that one of those fish is dead. It will give you a sense for nostalgic states, and the feeling of missing something or someone. 
it does involve losing things, losing stuff, and spending a lot. But it also gives a carefree attitude, an attitude of carpe diem, live the moment, live in the moment. Some people who don't manifest this energy in the best way will be needy. They won't be able to take care of themselves. And they will need help and care. On more positive states, it's an energy out of this world. Anything that is just out of this world is governed by Pisces and Neptune. As I said, mental states which put you out of this world. It may also involve losing consciousness. On lower manifestations, it may make you susceptible to manipulation, suggestion, stuff like that. So be careful with, with such placements. But it's the energy of transcending this reality, this world. And it's the energy of multidimensionality. It's, it has no boundaries. You're able with this energy to connect to any kind of dimension, any kind of reality. And so to transcend, as I said. So my loves, this is the natural zodiac. I'm grateful for your interest in this knowledge. And please do tell me how this session was like. I love you so much. Go shine and come shine.